All right, so we are sitting here for the first ever Pool Strings TV, and we're sitting here with Coma Lost Movies, one of my favorite Austin bands. So I'm very happy to be getting to do this interview. They're going to be here at Independence next Friday. Super excited for that with Anthony Garcia and Leslie Reynaga. So today we have uh, not the whole band, but we do have Nelson and Jaguar here with us. And I'm going to just run some questions here. Uh, and uh, you guys ready? Ready. All ready right. as we're going to be. All right, sweet. Well, let's shoot first off. Super awesome new video just dropped, I think, earlier this week, yes. or I guess last week. Last week, yeah. Yep. So, uh, really dug that. And remind me again, I know it's a kind of a list of initials. The name of the. It's a YPQSP. YPQSP. And it's, uh, it's uh, question marks on both sides. It's actually in Spanish. So, it's, uh, yeah. it's an acronym for uh, Y por qué seguimos peleando. So, it's a long, it's a long uh, uh, title. So, I was like, eh, let's just do you know, an acronym. Okay. Well, um, also that track just released, premiered to the world last uh, end of October, I yeah. think. Cool. Um, and y'all, I think uh, the way uh, it was in the way of a wave or wave, wave. No, wave was the first EP. Wave was was super cool, very solid. That's also what caught my ears the first time when I was checking you guys yeah. out. Thanks, um, and y'all also had a 2019, another single drop besides this one, right? We had a, uh, it's actually from the EP actually, it's called Una Vuelta Más, and that came out in May. Okay, we sweet. Cool. Um, well, I'll be picking one up uh, on Friday of the of the new one yeah, uh, that has the new video for it, because y'all have it on vinyl, right? Right, and as I think it's our first, it's our first vinyl release, and uh, really stoked about that, and it's just really nice to have, you know, your... You know your music, you know, on vinyl. So it's, our, it's our first. It's our first uh, vinyl. Uh, uh, for not first vinyl offering. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's... We're making our way through the the recording uh, medium, if you will. Yeah. Uh, the one before that was cassette. Oh right. I mean, we I think we have a CD under the belt CD as well. So CD, this yeah. is it. We're rounding the bases, if you will. Yeah, What's next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not in it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Play, play, play or piano. Yeah. Play or piano yeah. roll. One of those pull string. Almost lost movies action figures with the pull string. <laughs> yeah, almost lost movies action figure pull string toys presented by Pull String Events. There you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Um, so tell me what beers you guys are drinking on here. Do you remember the names? Oh, I am thoroughly enjoying the Mind Portal. A very delicious porter. Yeah. To be this time of year. Thank you, Independence. Yeah. All right, Nelson. I have the Power and Light, which is yeah. one of my favorites. Uh, you know, I, I discovered it in Cannes, and then uh, finally I, I made the trek out to the Independent Brewery and had it on, uh, yeah, on draft. And amazing. Cool. All right, guys. So a question that I really love to ask artists and uh, artists of all sorts is what were one of the, and I want you both to answer, uh, if you don't mind, uh, is what was one of your first sort of inspirations that when you saw it, you were like, wow, I want to do that. Like, how, how do I go home and start to do that? How do I start to create art or music or who was, who was it? And even guilty pleasures, you cannot you put your ego aside and say, you know what? I am proud that this inspired me. Whatever it may be, I'll tell you mine too. Whoa. <laughs> you go first. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think um, one of the first ones uh, that really inspired me was the first show I ever went to, and I don't listen to him anymore. Guilty pleasure at the time was Alice Cooper. It was like a magic show on stage and all these things, and I was like, wow. And then I saw My Life with the Thrill Kill Colt, oh, like, a year later, and I was just like, wow, this theatrical sort of sure. stuff. Way different genre, of course, uh, even than my own band, but still uh, really inspired me a lot, I think, just to be like, okay, now I want to start to do stuff. So it was a show for you that really... Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it was actually the live... The live what about you, man? So for me, I, I, don't I, know, I have three. I don't know exactly. It's a great question. I don't oh, know. I have three older brothers. So uh, when I was four years old, uh, my aunt Jamie she sent Kiss Alive to the double album <laughs> the set, and hearing that, and my family's from Detroit, and they have the Detroit Rock City song. Wow. And being four years old and hearing wow. that and feeling the energy, so and early too. I just knew yeah. this is what I wanted to do. I, I, I felt music just grabbed me in. 
It hasn't let go since. Yeah. <laughs> They're deep yeah. clubs. Deep oh, yeah. clubs. That's early on, too. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned four years of age, because I, I think I was three or four, and I was with my mom at the store, and there was this, I think it was like a toy saxophone. Like, they, it was just, they, they, it, it, it was just this, uh, and, and there's actually two instances, actually, I think within uh, a year apart, maybe. And also Easter, I went to a Kroger. You remember what a Kroger uh-huh. was? It was a Kroger, and there was a, for the Easter basket, it had a guitar in it. I've never played music. There was no music at home. Mom sang a lot. But, you know, it was, I saw this saxophone. I remember asking Mom, who can I have that toy? And of course, my mother said no. So, of course, I felt really bad. But I was drawn to this silvery, silver plastic thing that had all these buttons on it. You know, again, it was a plastic saxophone. So, like, maybe about a foot, you know, in length or whatever, you know, in the package. And then the, the Easter basket, too, was like, there was something about those. And, and, I, and I guess it must have connected with me because I can't explain any other way. Like, uh-huh. why are those things, in, there was no music around, there were no musicians in my family, none of my neighbors played music, nothing. But it somehow it's like, I wanted those toys. Yeah. Like, that's what I wanted. And then I had an older, like, you brother, I had an older cousin, who I think maybe a couple of years later really turned me on to uh, some really, really awesome music, and then I fell in love with it. And we would pretend we were in a band. And we would dust up and whatever, and just play music, yeah. and music to, um, the sticks, whatever we did. But I remember those two, four, five years of age, and I remember, I was just like, I want to grab those items and, and do so. I don't know what to do with them. Like, but I, those things just call my name. Yeah. I have no idea why. So it chose you. It chose you. I think so, man. Yeah. I've never thought about it that way, but you're right. Like, mm-hmm. Because again, it, was, it wasn't around the house. Yeah, that wasn't not even around my neighborhood. No one's really used to it. So around. when when you're up on stage at Blues on the Green and you guys are looking at a thousand plus people out there, are you guys thinking about your old toy saxophone and your first Kiss record? I actually was thinking about my cousin. My cousin turned me on to music. Uh, he he's not with us anymore, but he uh, he's the reason I play music. Yeah. He, I think if I had, I I think I discovered it on my own, and he just happened to be that uh, the, the music gods brought him, you know, into my life, you know, as, as my closest cousin or whatever, and he just, he introduced me to all this stuff, and I think, yeah, I was thinking about him. Yeah, and it, it's, it's tough. I, I mean, when you're there in the moments, and, you know, all of a sudden, you got the F sharp coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to get in the zone. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, <laughs> <that's a major. laughs> but, I, I definitely took a moment at the on the blues and the green to really appreciate the spectacle of it all. I, that was a really incredible experience. Yeah. After many years of doing this, and uh, yeah, I, I definitely tried to take a moment to just kind of breathe it in, you know, soak it in, and and appreciate because. Uh, as much as I wish that every gig could be like that, uh, it's not always the situation. Because some are so much better, such as the one upcoming yeah, at Independence this Brewery. Yeah, going to be rocking, for sure. <laughs> yes. We've been having a lot of really wonderful experiences here. And you guys have, I found out after booking you too, y'all have played here with Taylor Wallace's Taylor mm-hmm. Green one season, mm-hmm. DJ yes. with KTX. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how was that show? That was, that was great. Man. Awesome, was really cool. Great. Well, hopefully we'll have some repeat fans out from that yeah. too. So, really excited for that. So. What else is next besides the show coming up? Um, you guys have on the radar. I know you've been busy with all your releases and things going right. on. But we got this next? really, we got this really cool uh, gig in December that we'll be doing with uh, Money Chicha and uh, Nemegata, and then we have uh, and a band out of out of Arizona, I believe. But I, I they changed their names. I can't remember. But it's all this cumbia uh, based sort of things, and uh, so that's what's coming up after this. But also. You know, promoting the video, we got the video we're promoting, uh, but also uh, we are currently working on uh, demos for a recording we'll be doing in December uh, for a, uh, we're doing these covers for this Mexican cumbia band called uh, Grupo G. Well, actually, I think they've changed their name a couple of times, called Grupo G and Super Grupo G. And so we're doing a couple of their songs, and hopefully we'll release them uh, sometime early next year uh, on vinyl as well. So awesome. continue the vinyl, you know, uh, uh, way of uh, medium of uh, uh, you know, uh, sharing our music. So. Awesome, super excited for you guys. It's really fun. I, I really love getting in with bands and booking and getting to meet everyone and then also see people just continue to bloom and blossom and grow and 
it gets harder and harder to contact everyone as they keep growing further away. So I'm really glad to be able to meet with you guys and you spend a little bit extra time of your week to come meet here. Um, definitely everyone come out, get the vinyl on Friday at Independence Brewing Company. It's going to be rocking. We've had a lot of really successful shows here with a lot of really awesome bands. Mm -hmm. Come try out some of the new beers on tap. Delicious. Come, yeah, come also take a brewery tour, meet the community. It's a really awesome place. So keep following Como Lost Movies. It's been a really awesome ride so far. I know it's going to keep continuing. So there's no sign of it slowing down. Well, you've been a big supporter, man. You know, you've always, uh, I finally met you for the first time back in, uh, when was it? When did we have Nomad X? I was in May, I May, think. May, May, June. Yeah, yeah. And I met yeah, you first time. Ago. So you're a big supporter of these, and I really appreciate it. Cool. Well, right. we're so it. thankful uh, that you asked us to be a part of this. Well, we're here if you guys need us ever, for sure. That's our, our whole goal. I mean, it's just kind of pull everyone together, pull all the strings, get everyone in the same area. Focused on the same mutual dreams. So. Yeah. Being art, man. All right, we'll see y'all on Friday.